Going to prison ain't cool, but going to prison for a crime you didn't commit? That's enough to drive anyone bonkers. Let's take a look at some of the longest prison sentences served by innocent people. Number 5. Henry McCollum and Leon Brown Two North Carolina men who were wrongfully convicted in a case regarding misconduct and taking the life of an 11-year-old were awarded $75 million total in compensatory damages. Henry McCollum and Leon Brown, who each spent 31 years in jail for a crime they did not commit, were each awarded $1 million for every year spent in prison. In addition to the $31 million each, the eight-person jury awarded them $13 million in punitive damages. McCollum and Brown are half-brothers who had low IQs when they were questioned by police about the incident. McCollum was 19 and Brown was 15. McCollum was sentenced to the gallows, becoming the longest-serving inmate on North Carolina's row. Brown was sentenced to life in prison. More than three decades after they were convicted of the passing of Sabrina Bowie in 1983, new DNA evidence showed another man was responsible. The two were coerced into confessing to the crime, their defense attorney said in 2015, when a judge vacated their conviction and they were released from prison. Governor Pat McCrory granted them pardons, and they were each awarded $750,000 for the time they spent behind bars. Shortly after, the brothers began pursuing a federal civil rights case. Their lawyers argued that law enforcement coerced confessions, suppressed and fabricated evidence, investigated the crime in bad faith, and ignored evidence that linked to another suspect. The jurors deliberated for five hours before deciding to award the brothers the $75 million settlement, which lawyers believe is the largest amount rewarded for a wrongful conviction case in the state's history. The moment was emotional for the brothers. I've got my freedom, McCollum said. There's still a lot of innocent people in prison today, and they don't deserve to be there. Number 4. Richard Phillips A Michigan man who spent 45 years in prison before he was exonerated of taking a life will receive $1.5 million from the state the Attorney General's office has announced. Richard Phillips, 73, was exonerated in 2018, becoming the longest-serving U.S. inmate to be cleared. He's been selling his prison paintings to raise money while waiting to learn whether he would be compensated under a Michigan law that pays the wrongly convicted. We have an obligation to provide compassionate compensation to these men for the harm they suffered, Attorney General Dana Nessel said in a statement. Her office agreed to pay $780,000 to Neil Reddick, who served nearly 16 years in prison for criminal physical conduct in Genesee County. The complainant recanted, and the conviction was thrown out in 2007. Ray McCann was set to receive $40,000. He served 20 months in jail and prison after feeling pressured to plead no contest to perjury in a homicide investigation in St. Joseph County. The conviction was thrown out in 2017, two years after another man confessed to the crime. Michigan lawmakers still need to put more money into the fund. Phillips had long declared his innocence in a fatal shooting in the Detroit area in 1971. The Innocence Clinic at University of Michigan Law School learned that a co-defendant in 2010 told the parole board that Phillips had absolutely no role. Someone who is exonerated based on new evidence can qualify for $50,000 for every year spent in prison. Phillips would appear to qualify for more than $2 million based on 45 years behind bars but he's being paid for only 30 years because he was serving a separate armed robbery conviction at the same time. The Attorney General's office made a decision to pay him every penny he's currently owed. I'm very happy with how things have turned out, said Phillips' attorney, Gabby Silver. Number 3. Kevin Strickland A Missouri man wrongfully convicted of taking three lives in 1978 and imprisoned for more than 42 years has been exonerated and released. Kevin Strickland, 62, has maintained his innocence since his arrest at age 18. He was sentenced in June 1979. Mr. Strickland said outside court, I didn't think this day would come. It was the longest wrongful incarceration in state history, but under Missouri law, he is unlikely to receive any financial compensation. According to data from the National Registry of Exonerations, which has logged exoneration since 1989, it would also be the seventh longest wrongful sentence acknowledged in the U.S. A judge ordered the immediate release of Mr. Strickland from state custody after 15,487 days behind bars. Lawyers for the Midwest Innocence Project, who had worked for months to help free Mr. Strickland, told the BBC they were ecstatic about the news. We were confident any judge who saw the evidence would find Mr. Strickland is innocent, and that is exactly what happened, said Midwest Innocence Project legal director Trisha Rojo Bushnell in a statement. She added, Nothing will give him the 43 years he has lost and he returns home to a state that will not pay him a cent for the time it stole from him. That is not justice. The state of Missouri only compensates prisoners exonerated through DNA evidence, not because of eyewitness testimony, according to the Midwest Innocence Project. 
Mr. Strickland was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for 50 years after he was linked to the fatal ransacking of a home in Kansas City on 25 April 1978. On that night, four assailants shot three people inside the home, Sherry Black, 22, Larry Ingram, 22, and John Walker, 20. A fourth victim, Cynthia Douglas, 20, escaped with injuries after pretending to be passed out. On a hunch from her sister's boyfriend, police arrested the teenage Mr. Strickland and then reportedly pressured Miss Douglas to pick him out of a lineup. Mr. Strickland told police he had been at home watching television. No physical evidence ever linked him to the crimes. His first trial in 1979 ended with a hung jury after one black juror on a 12-member panel held out for his acquittal. At his second trial, an all-white jury found Mr. Strickland guilty of one count of capital crime and two counts of second degree. Years later, Miss Douglas would recant her lone eyewitness testimony, writing to the Midwest Innocence Project that things were not clear back then, but now I know more and would like to help this person if I can. Miss Douglas passed away before she could formally recant her testimony against Mr. Strickland, but her mother, sister, and daughter have all testified in court that she picked the wrong guy. Prosecutors in Jackson County began reviewing Mr. Strickland's conviction and under a new Missouri law, filed a motion calling for his immediate exoneration and release. Under these unique circumstances, the court's confidence in Strickland's conviction is so undermined that it cannot stand, and the judgment of conviction must be set aside, wrote Judge James Welsh. Number 2. Craig Coley Craig Coley, 71, was sentenced to life in prison without parole for taking the life of his former partner in 1978, Rhonda Wicht, and her four-year-old son Donald at their apartment. He had always maintained his innocence and was pardoned in 2017 by California's then-governor, Jerry Brown, based on exculpatory DNA evidence found by investigators. While no amount of money can make up for what happened to Mr. Coley, settling this case is the right thing to do for him and our community, Simi Valley City Manager Eric Levitt said. The 39 years Coley spent behind bars was the largest prison term ever overturned in California. Since his release, Coley has spoken to law enforcement officials about evidence collection and has met with parents of prisoners who maintain their innocence, according to Mike Bender, a close friend and former police detective in Simi Valley, a community just outside Los Angeles. Bender had pushed for Coley's release for nearly three decades after he became troubled by aspects of the case. Craig's message is, always don't give up, Bender said. More than 350 U.S. inmates have been exonerated by DNA testing since 1989, according to New York-based The Innocence Project, which helps people who were wrongfully convicted. On average, convicts who were freed have served 14 years in prison when exonerated. California authorities awarded Coley $1.95 million, $140 for each day he spent in prison. At the time, it was the largest payout for a wrongful conviction by the state's Victim Compensation Board. Number 1. Tall Bear With the consent of the Oklahoma County District Attorney, District Court Judge Glenn M. Jones vacated the 1992 slaying conviction and dismissed the charges against Johnny Edward Tall Bear, based on new DNA evidence proving his innocence. Tall Bear served 26 years for taking a life all based on the erroneous statements of an alleged eyewitness who claimed to have seen Tall Bear fighting with the victim but later expressed doubts about his identification. We are grateful to District Attorney David Prater and Assistant District Attorney Jen Hinsberger for collaborating with us to secure DNA testing in this case and for expeditiously moving to vacate Mr. Tall Bear's conviction once the results were obtained said Karen Thompson, a senior staff attorney with the Innocence Project. The DNA proving Mr. Tallbear's innocence was pivotal to bringing an end to his wrongful incarceration. I've been saying for more than two decades that I didn't have anything to do with this horrible crime. I've always known that I'm innocent, and now the DNA has proved it, said Tallbear. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you another time.